you, Bridges. Everything ready, Bridges? Yes, sir. I thought we should never get here in time. I'm sure that cabbie was tipsy, Robert. So am I. He called me his old cockalora. Oh, what did you say? Gave him another shilling. <laughs> You didn't mind our leaving the others and coming on home. Oh, darling, I loved you for thinking of it. I hope you would. Oh, Ellen, what lovely flowers. They're from Bridges and Nina. With our very best wishes, I'm sure. Oh, Ellen. Thank you both so much. Not at all, sir. It's a, it's a pleasure indeed. <laughs> How sweet of them to think of giving us flowers on New Year's Eve. Rather touching. So touching that I... I almost want to cry. Well, if you must. This evening was planned sentimentally. Sentimentally, but not tragically. <laughs> Splendid. <laughs> You'll have to hurry up, Cook, if you want to see them celebrations. Now, now which would you wear, Mr. Bridges? This nice pork pie hat? Oh, the lovely picture hat the missus give me. Well, why not wear them both and go as Lady Godiva? Yeah, vulgar. Oh, look what you're doing. Squeezing them things in people's eyes and blinding them. You'd be blinding someone if you went as Lady Godiva. Oh, indeed? Watch your step, Cookie, when you're celebrating. You know what you're like after you've had a couple of stifters. Don't be disgusting, Mr. Bridges. New Year's Eve's gone to her head, and no mistake. She's been queer all day. Says she feels like as if it was the end of everything. Oh, so do I, for that matter. Oh, don't start that all over again. Oh, well. We've been so happy here in service. Can't bear to think what it's going to be like when you've gone to the war. Well, don't. You were never cut out for a soldier. Never mind what I was cut out for. I am a soldier now. See? What's going to happen to me and baby if anything happens to you? Now, look here, old girl. You married me for better or for worse. Not for this kind of worse, I didn't. You gallivanting in Africa and me stopping at home. Oh, you got a lot to take on about, I don't think. Look at the missus and her brother. Out there in that there mafficking. Besieged by them there boars right from the beginning. Not enough to eat, only horses and rats. Yes. And now her husband's going and two growing boys to look after. Have some sense. Sense? What's the sense in the war? Nobody wanted to have a war. We have to have wars now and then just to prove we're top dog. <laughs> now stop arguing and help me get up this punch. Or the bells will be ringing and they won't have anything to drink. You look so beautiful tonight. Do I, Robert? Only your dress, I suppose. Very deceiving. Yes, Robert. And the star in your hair. And the star in my hair. And the fact that I love you so very, very much. After ten whole years and two enormous children, how can you? Perhaps you're hideous and ill-dispositioned and tedious, really. And I never knew. Perhaps. Well, it's too late now. I'm set in the habit of loving you. I shall never know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How wonderful our marriage has been. Has. Give the future a chance. We don't know if there is to be a future. Now. <laughs> That's a cheerful thought for the new century. About as cheerful as the thought of being without you. Oh, Robert, my dear, I shall miss you so. What does it matter about the war? About the Boers? It, it can't matter, really. Aren't you forgetting about your brother Jim in Mafeking, hemmed in by the Boers? No, I'm not forgetting Jim. But it does seem so desperately hard. What does? Nothing. I was nearly behaving badly. You, you couldn't behave badly. I suppose this war will end someday. Why, of course, in a few months. Perhaps it'll be over before you get there. Perhaps. I believe you'd hate that. I wonder if Jim's still alive. Of course he's alive. They're all alive. Mafeking's bound to be relieved soon.
Just on time, sir. Nearly midnight. Put it down there, Bridges. Stay and drink with us, won't you? Thank you very much, Thank ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. That's right. Oh, the children. Stay on the leg, Master Chair. How very impolite of the 20th century to wake up the children. Mum! Oh, Joey, you awful child. How dare you make such a noise? Oh, darling, you haven't got a pain, have you? I want to see you here. Little boys mustn't. What would you say if I spanked you soundly and sent you to bed? I would say old woman that lived in the shoe. And what would you say if I spanked you again for calling your mother an old woman? I wouldn't say nothing. Mum, can we see New Year tomorrow instead? Shh. You'll wake up, Edward. By George, we ought to have the children down. A new century is a new century. Ellen, go and get them some milk to drink good luck. Heaven, they're too young to fight. Peace and happiness for you, my darling. Please, God. Peace and happiness, always. Darling, let's take them downstairs. No, it's so bad to break their night's sleep. For well, once in a century won't matter, surely. Just for once. Oh, well. Oh, Mum, how lovely. <laughs> Quiet, you naughty little scamp. <laughs> Come along, Edward. What, Mum, what? We're going down and see New Year. New Year? <laughs> Come on, put this on, dear. Are we singing? Do we not? Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? La da 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 dee da da dee da dee da lang. This is yours, Jerry. Thank you. You are, dear. Thank you, darling. 1900, happy new century. 1900. 
Funny, good. Oh, here, 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 here. Now, let's have a bit of life in it. Here, half a mo' cookie. Someone's going to eat that pastry you're crying into. Oh, well, don't be such a fool. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Here, Fanny. You can give your old dad a smile. Come and have a look at your old dad. Look at his buttons. Oh. All shine up nice and bright, ain't they? Oh, now, come on, old girl, now. Crying won't do no good. <laughs> Fanny, your old dad's going to the war. He's gonna be a soldier of the Queen, my lass. Who's been, my lass? Who's seen, my lass? <laughs> How many days will they be at sea, Colonel? Sixteen. It's six thousand miles to South Africa. You see, they land here at Cape Town, then proceed by rail to Kimberley, then by force march to Mepikin. Let's hope they get there in time. Mepikin's in a very bad way. It's doubtful if they can hold out much longer. Isn't it a wonderful sight? I'm wondering how many of them will come back alive. It's come at last, hasn't it? Yeah. You'll be brave, won't you? Take care of yourself. I shall probably be seasick. Then lie down flat on every possible occasion. I'll try to remember. Bridges will look after you. Perhaps she'll be lying down flat, too. <laughs> I must go, too. No, not just for a minute. I really must go. I'm going to kiss you, then I want you to turn away and go on talking so you won't see it. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I didn't bring Edward and Joey. They're too young, really, and they'd get overexcited. Besides, uh, Joey has a cold. Take care of yourself, my darling. I felt you go when I said that bit about Joey. Oh, Robert! They seem to be all right. Thank God. Bang, bang, bang! Daddy O'Kruger! Daddy O'Kruger! Get up, you silly kid! Fire without orders! But I'm 
leaving Battle Cave. Well, you can't leave it like that. All right, then I'm defending Battle Shut up, you're wasting ammunition. Bang, bang, bang. Don't do it, Edith. You kids have no idea how to fight a battle. Sorry, Bob. Get your men and guns over there. You're the boss. But I don't want to be the boss. Somebody's got to be the boss. And that's all a girl's good for. But I don't want to be but the I boss. I tell you. I won't be the boss. I won't be the boss. I won't be the oh, boss. Oh, you cheat. Oh, Come on, stop, stop. You. Stop. Oh, 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 what's the matter? Edith doesn't like being the boss. Well, and who would? Bang, bang, bang. Oh, no. oh Joey, you're a naughty, witty little boy. Come oh, here, Edith. Straight upstairs this minute. Come here and don't be so silly. Oh, go away, go away, all of you. It would take Joey upstairs. Can't you play any other game but soldiers fighting each other, killing each other? Now run along up to the nursery, all of you, and behave yourselves. There's no escape from that tune anywhere. Or shall I throw him something? Yes, you can throw it at him. Oh, Jane, dear. Hi! Hi! Will you go away? Further down the street. Jane, dear, do sit down. You've been standing about all the afternoon. I don't believe I shall ever see them again. Nonsense. Mr. King's bound to be relieved in the next few days. All the papers say so. Everyone's been saying that for months. My brother's still out there dying by inches. Starvation, disease and horror. And Robert. I can't bear to think of it and I can't stop thinking. Well, no news yet, Ellen. Have a nice cup of tea, Mum. Don't fret about the master, Mum. He's all right. You see, he's got my Alfred with him. And we'd be bound to hear if anything happened. Poor Ellen, it must be just as bad for you. Well, no news is good news, and what must be, must be. That's what I say. You'd never believe how cheers you are. Now, come, darling, drink this tea. Pictures, all about the war. Picture special, all about the war. Ladies in the trunk. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ladies. Picture, all about the war. Picture, all about the war. What is it, Ellen? What is it? Nothing, ma'am. Paper, all about the war. Picture, paper. No news is good news. What must be, must be. Now, look here, Jane, dear. I'm going now, and I'm coming back at a quarter to seven. Quarter to seven, why? We are going out to dine at a restaurant, and we are going to a theatre. Restaurant? Theatre by ourselves? Oh, oh Mark. Well, why not? Now, there's no sense in sitting at home fretting. And it doesn't do any good. We'll get Ronnie James to take us. And if he can't, then we'll go by ourselves. I don't care what people say. It's sweet of you, Margaret, but I simply can't. Now, Jane, dear, I'm going home to have a bath and to put on my new red fern model. And I shall be back at a quarter to seven. Oh, but, Margaret, I... Now, don't argue. Do just what you're told. Robert and Jim would hate to think of you sitting at home weeping and wailing. They are being gallant enough. We must be gallant, too. We'll dine at the Café Royal. Margaret, honestly, now, I... Now, we'll dine at the Café Royal. Soldiers of the Queen, wounded and dying, suffering for their queen. 
Yes. What? You're not a dairy maid. <laughs> Mr. Inquisitive. Well, well, what are you? Me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm lady's maid to the Princess Mirabelle. The princess? Then he wins his bet after all. Who? What bet? Lieutenant Edgar. All the officers on the ship wagered him that he would not win the hand of Princess Mirabelle. He said he would marry her if she was as ugly as sin. Oh. He needs the money. How? Huh? What are you doing here? Yeah. Just farming, sir. Stop! <laughs> Your pride that's hurt. I'm very much afraid. to put my face out. I once knew a woman who was from there called fire when she was making toast. And before you could count ten, the old room was ablaze. I'd never have been able to recognize our remains if it hadn't been for our cameo brooch. Fancy that now. And who's her ladyship today? Who's a lovely girl? Don't burn that toast, Annie. Kitchy, 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 kitchy. Your dad's coming home today, love. Safe and sound, safe and sound, safe and sound. I only hope he is safe and sound, I'm sure. You're a nice, cheerful body, I must say. I've had experience. When I was a girl, a friend of mine's husband come home unexpected like from the Crimea with no legs at all. <laughs> Stop it, Annie. Now look what you've done. Cut another piece quick. They'll be here in a minute. Why do a villain didn't cry at the station? He does make her nose so red. Alfred will be that pleased to see her, but he won't care whether it's red or blue. <laughs> oh, come on, Harry, or you Where is Africa? What do you mean, where's Africa? Where is Africa? Don't be silly. Well, where is it? 
I never heard such an ignorant girl in all my life. Haven't you ever seen it on the map? No, I've seen it on the map. But where is it really? You ought to be ashamed of yourself asking such dark questions. Oh, well, you know where it is, Mrs. Snapper. And if there's a way, Annie, you're getting on my nerves. Well, I would like to know where it is. Ruth! I was dying of laughing at the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Ellen. You pay. I want to see that baby of mine. Cheers, old blow hard takes my kitty. How much? Half a crown. Ooh, yeah. Where's my lover duck? Hello, cook. Hello, Ma. Where's my girl? There she is. Hello, Fanny. Ooh, ain't you grown? You ain't half been feeding her up, Ma. Ha. Look at her smile. She knows that old dad. Yes, put it down there. Good luck, old man. Same to you, mate. Ooh, I thought it would never come to an end, that idea. And all the people yelling and screaming. <laughs> Here, Alfred, take your great head out of that pram, or you frighten her. Ah, oh, she knows me, that's what. She knows her old dad. Look at her rose head and all. Smart as me eye. Hello. Who's this? We haven't had the pleasure. That's Annie. Hello, Annie. Oh, welcome home, Mr. Bridges. Oh. <laughs> well, Ma, how's everything? Well, I mustn't put on the I should just think not. I've got a surprise for you. What is it? Ellen knows. I told her in the cab. Tell her, Ellen. Now, you, go on. Well, Ma, you know I said in my letters about a lad named Herbert Smart? Yes. Ellen read your letters out loud. Not all of them, I hope. Get on with you. You never let yourself go further than a P.S. and a couple of crosses. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Ma. This chap's got a pub. A pub. A beer house. Oh, now, don't pretend you don't know what a pub is, you rascal. <laughs> well, anyhow, he's got a pub in London here. And he's staying in Africa. So I bought it from him cheap. Now you can come and live with us, Ma. What do you say? Oh, is it a respectable pub? Oh, well, of course, it all depends how you behave, Ma. You know what you're like after you've had a couple of snifters. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think? Well, what about them upstairs? Oh, that's all right. I took the master into me confidence. He helped me with the money. Oh, I can hardly believe it. Not having to live alone anymore. <laughs> Here, cheer up. Have a cup of tea. Let's all have a cup of tea. Come on. Well, cookie, old girl. <laughs> Here. How'd you like to be a barmaid? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> where is Africa, Mr. Bridges? Well, I don't rightly know where it is, but it's bloody hot when you get there. Where's old Lang? You're old, Danny. I'll be glad too when you stop pounding the bread out of me. Children are quite so rough. Did you see me? Mm, no, it's lots of. Did you kill any? No, we won't go into that. Did you kill any lions? Forty-four lions, a zebra, two ostriches, and uh, oh yes, a cocky olive bird. What is a cocky olive bird? I'll come up and tell you tonight in the nursery. Now then, off with you both. I want to talk to your mother. Can I wear your hat, Daddy? You may. Off with you. What's he yelling about? Oh, what's the matter? What's up? It ain't nothing to concern us. Oh, Ellen, how can you? When it concerns the old country. What concerns the old country? Alfred's coming home's all that concerns me. Well, what are you all looking so miserable about? The Queen. The Queen? The Queen. It says she's sinking. Well, I told you so. Let's have a look. She's very old, ain't she? Oh, be quiet, Annie. What's that got to do with it? Well, I never seen her. I have. 
driving along Birdcage Walk once, years ago. Oh. England won't half seem funny without the Queen. part of the procession or at the end? At the beginning, darling. He'll be with the troops that go in front of the gun carriage with the Queen's coffin. All these crowds of people. They've been waiting for hours, so patient and quiet. There's hardly a sound. I feel listless and sad. As though her death were a personal loss. Mum! Mum! There's a policeman on a lovely oh, white horse! Darling, don't jump about and get excited. Edward, keep Joey quiet. Yes, Mum. Mum, could I ever be a policeman? Perhaps, if you're very good. Are all policemen good? Oh, as good as gold. Why did Queen Victoria die, Mum? Because she was a very old lady and very tired. Could I have another piece of cake? And me a tiny piece, then. Peace for Edith. And Edward. Yes. Then, run along. All right. Here, Edith, here's your piece. Thank you. Which hand? That one. That's not my piece. Yes, it is. It is not. Quite good, but Joey. <laughs> well, Edward, are you all behaving? Yes, Mum. Listen, they're coming. The procession's in sight, Mum, and the servants are here. Oh, come in, all of you. You better go out on that balcony. Yes. Is that Bob's Pop? Is that Bob? Now, children, stand absolutely still to attention as your father showed you. Riding behind her. Mom, she must have been a very little lady. Harris and Captain Ronald James. 
Lady Holmes, Sir Robert and Lady Marion. How do you like to see you? And you, Sir Robert. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Jeffrey Fidion. Well, Sir Robert. Well, my lady. Isn't this fun? I think I want to run away and hide. However, it may get me a little respect from your children. Oh, my darling, they're wild with delight. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you, Robert. It's all you, darling. Always has been. near Pretoria with the old regulars, Fusiliers and that lot. They all seem sort of helpless like. So I went up to the commanding officer and I said to him, I said, I said, look here. I said, Mr. Bridget, is Harry good for a drink? Has he had it? Yeah. He's good for it. What's that, Harry? What the hell? So I went to the commanding officer and I said, look here, I says. These lads ain't got no initiative, I says. Right old Bridges, he says. You go down and tell them from me. Alfred? Come in. Go down, Bridges, he says, and tell the commanding officer from me. Alfred, will you kindly come in here a minute? I'll tell you what he said when I come back. Well, what is it? Oh, come in, Ian. Alfred, how can you go on like this day after day? Well, what's the matter? I thought you was going to pay the rent to the brewers this afternoon. Well, what about it? What about it? You ain't never been on time of the rent yet. Do you want to have us turned out of the place? Well, I've got to look after me bar, I suppose. You ain't got to go and drink up all the profits. Oh, Alfred, ain't you got no pride left? You were so respectable when we was in service. Well, you don't have to snap a man's head off just because he wants to be his own boss. Fine boss you are, dressed up like a public house loafer. Now, look here, Ellen. Don't you make me have to speak to you severe. I'm the boss here, see, and my clothes are my affair. As a matter of fact, I'm just going along to the brewers now, see? But don't you tell me what I've got to do. Has he gone? Yes, he's gone. Hello, Fanny Miguel. Been doing your lessons? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, give your old dad a kiss. Oh. Too proud to kiss your old dad, eh? Come on now. You do as you're told. Go on, get inside. Don't stay out of your plane on the streets. Uh, freedom ain't for everybody. The summers, it's better for them to have a firm hand oh. over them. <laughs> My, you are late. Here, put your books down. Go upstairs and put on your white dress. Go on, Harry. Hello, Alf. Hello, Alf. Hello, Bill. Hello, mate. Hello, Alf. How about one? No, nothing to drink. Just going to the brewery. Business, see? Oh, one won't hurt you. All right. Only one, mind. Oh, That's all we're going to have. Go on. Go on. Why, Ellen, she dances beautifully. Come here, dear. I knew you when you were a little tiny baby. The child's a born dancer, if you ask me. Highly talented. Highly. On the go, you know, from morning till night. Have you any children, any? Well, I haven't exactly, if you know what I mean. George, don't believe in families. Not in the retail business. Now, what I mean, you've got enough to do to look after the shop. Oh, I see. You see, my cousin George is a greengrocer, my lady. <clears throat> <clears throat> I see. Can I press you to another cup, my ladyship? Oh, no, thank you, really. We've, uh, it's getting very late. Uh, yes, mother. 
And how was Cambridge when you left it, Master Edward? Oh, awfully nice, I suppose. I'm at Oxford, you know. Oh, Oxford. I've never been to Oxford. But my husband has, haven't you, George? Yes. Nice place, Oxford. Very antique, if you know what I mean. Sir Robert will be so sorry to hear of Bridget's illness, Ellen. Ill? Alf ill? What's the matter with him? Before you and Annie come, George, I was explaining to her ladyship that their poor Alfred's bad leg. Bad leg? Yes, very bad. He's been in horrible agony since Sunday. <laughs> you would laugh at someone being hurt. Where is he? Upstairs, in bed. I'll pop up and have a look no, at him. No, he mustn't be disturbed. And how did he come to have the accident? Uh, cycling, Annie. He was cycling and he fell off. I didn't know he had a cycle. He hasn't any more. Well, please tell him how sorry we are. Come, Edward, we really must be going now. Here are you. It was ever so kind of you and the lady to come all this way to see us and to give Fanny that lovely doll and everything. Say goodbye to her ladyship, Fanny. Goodbye, my lady. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye, Annie. I'm so glad you settled down so happily. Pleased to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. Goodbye, Ellen. Please remember us to Bridges. We miss you both still. We miss you too, my lady. Well, time changes many things, but it can't change old friends, can it? No, my lady. Oh, no, my lady. Goodbye, Ellen. And good luck. Goodbye, Master Edward, and thank you for coming. And goodbye. <laughs> Alfred! Oh, so this is why you wanted me out of the way, eh? Alfred Bridges, behave yourself. Pleased to see you again, my lady, I'm sure. Welcome to our oval. Oh, proud and haughty, are we? Alfred, stop it, stop it! Ellen, dear Ellen, I'm so very, very sorry. I quite understand, quite. I'll come and see you again soon. You drunken great brute! You shut your mouth. You mind your business and I'll mind mine. Look here, old man. You better come up and have a lay down. Leave me alone. A lot of snobs, that's what. A lot of blasted snobs. No, no. Uh, I'm not good enough to be at home when the quality comes. Oh, no. I'll show you who's good enough. I should never be able to hold my head up again. Never, never. Oh. Who get back of that dog? A noble ladyship, I suppose. Well, we don't want none of her blasted charity right here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Don't let go. Come on up here. You're coming upstairs. What, what, what you're going to do? You're coming right up here. Blasted snow. <laughs> she was right. She was right. Time changes many things. <laughs> That's all right. Look here, Ellen. Alf will tell you how sorry he is when he gets back. I'll go. I'll go. Hey, Mrs. Bridges, I think you'd better come. Alf's met with an accident. He hurt? Bad? He 
Yes. Yes, I know, darling. He has strong nerves. But he doesn't need a whole deputation of us to meet him. Edith and I are going to the concert on the East Pier. Concert? How loathsome. Nobody's asking you, my little man. You just take your spade and your bucket and have a nice little pad. Oh, Edward! Come along, Edith. 
you don't mind, Mummy. Of course not, darling. Do just what you like. Are those two children getting romantic by any chance? Romantic? They're absolutely pathetic. Oh, Joey, behave. Oh, but, Mum, can't you see they've gone completely dippy about each other? Why, it seems only yesterday they were quarrelling over their toys in the nursery. I wonder if Joey's right. Would you mind? Jane, dear, of course not. Would you? My son and your daughter. Darling, you know I'd be delighted. Well, if we're ever going to meet Father... Oh, yes, we mustn't keep him waiting. Why, Ellen! What a surprise! Oh, my lady, fancy you being here. Well, how do you do, Ellen? How do you do, ma'am? <laughs> Hello, Ellen. Oh, Master Joe, oh, you have grown. <laughs> I got your letter, my lady, when my Alfred died. It was kind of you to write, I'm sure. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I hope your business affairs... Oh, quite all right, my lady. I kept on the place. I left my manager in charge. We're just down here to give Fanny holiday. <laughs> she goes to dancing academy now. She won this prize today for dancing. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> Not half good enough, if you ask me. Dances like have a liver, that child. Dances like who? Have a liver, the Russian dancer. Don't be so ignorant. Oh, she wants to go on the stage, I suppose. <laughs> oh, Jane, darling, there you are. Oh, hello. Oh, Sir Robert. <laughs> Why, Ellen, how are you? Uh, quite well, thank you, sir. Grand. This is my cousin, Mr. Granger. How do you do? <laughs> and his wife. How are you? I never met you before, but I met your missus all right. Oh, yes. I don't think she told me. Why, it was the day poor old Alf popped off. <laughs> I do believe you'd rather be at that revolting concert on that peculiarly hideous pier, listening to Mendelssohn's spring song or a great beefy contralto singing sweet and low. I adore contralto. I love sweet and low, and I simply worship Mendelssohn's spring song. What are your other vices? Oh, sitting on boats with cynical young men and looking far out to sea. Oh, but Edith, I'm not a cynic, only a realist. Look, big steamer. Bearing her precious human freight to the farthest flung outposts of the Empire. <laughs> Don't laugh. I'd love to be on board, wouldn't you? Together? Perhaps. We'd be seasick. Hideously. Oh, everyone is. What? Seasick, hideously. Horrors. <laughs> All the same, I'd risk it. Would you? Together? On the loveliest ship in the world? On the most wonderful honeymoon in the world. Oh, Edward. Darling. Edith. I'm so terribly in love with you. Look, Blerio flying the channel. He's done it. to be expected in mid-ocean. We're nearing the banks of Newfoundland. Would you like to go in? No, it's all right. Too big, the Atlantic, isn't it? Mm, far too big. Oh, and too deep. Oh, much, much too deep. I don't care a bit, do you? <laughs> Not a scrap. Wouldn't it be awful if a magician came to us and said, Unless you count accurately every single fish in the Atlantic, you die tonight. We should die tonight. How much would you mind? Dying, I mean. Oh, I don't know. 
good deal, I expect. I don't believe I should mind so very much. You see, we can never in our whole lives be any happier than we are now. Could we? Sweetheart. Are all honeymoons like this? Exactly. Oh, Edward. It's rather disheartening, isn't it? I do so want this to be unique. <laughs> it is. For us. Did you ever think, when we were children, going to the pantomime and going to the zoo... That and... we should end up by getting married? Mm -hmm. Of course I didn't. You were a horrible child. Well, so were you. And so was Joey. Vile. Do we all like each other, really? Dear Joey. He's passing gallantly to the chorus girl phase now, isn't he? Mm. Gallantly, but not quickly. Well, darling, you took your time over it. No, we did. Didn't you? Light of my life. Shut up. You'd uh, be awfully cross if I'd had affairs. If you'd what? Had affairs. Love affairs before you. You didn't. Hundreds. <laughs> Gee, liar. I rather wish I had sometimes. Perhaps then I should have learned some tricks to hold you with when you begin to get tired of me. I shall never do that. Tricks or no tricks. Oh, yes, you will one day. People always do. This complete loveliness will fade. And we shall forget what it was like. Edith, don't. Oh, it's bound to. Just a few years and the guilt wears off the gingerbread. Darling, answer me one thing truthfully. Have you ever seen gingerbread with guilt on it? <laughs> Fool. <laughs> then the whole argument is disposed of. Anyway, look at father and mother. They're perfectly happy and always happy. Oh, yes, but... They had a better chance in the beginning. Things weren't changing so swiftly, and life wasn't so restless. Now, how long do you give us? I don't know. Oh, and Edward, I don't care. This is our moment, complete and heavenly. I'm not afraid of anything. This is our own, forever. It'll be 10 o'clock before we get to London. We're held up by many more troop trains. It'll be tomorrow morning. Oh, or next week. May I see your paper, Robert? Hmm? Oh, of course, my dear. If anything is going to happen. It's going to happen, all right. Good 
This is a lark, isn't it? Well, I put the bags up. Hello, spring cleaning. Where's your father? Oh, groping about in the cellar like an angry old beetle. He wants a drink. Here, here. So do I. Well, I'd better go and see if I can find some biscuits or something. Cigarette? Oh, thank you, girl. Pretty thrilling, isn't it? Oh, just a bit too thrilling, my dear. Oh, right on, Margaret. It's absolutely marvellous. Passing all those supply trains and guns, being pushed aside to make way for the troops, and the crowds waiting for something to happen. Oh, it was wonderful. Jane's howling for you in the kitchen, Margaret. Oh, all right. <clears throat> well, I can't find anything but Huck. We had to drink to Germany's downfall in their own damn wine. <laughs> I rather like Germans, don't you, Father? Enormously. Give me a hand, Joey. If there is a war, how long do you think it'll last? Oh, three months at the outside. We shall win. We shall win. Perhaps it'll last six months. Economically impossible. Have you any idea what a war costs? Hell of a lot, I suppose. A hell of a lot. The Germans can afford it even less than we can. And then there's Russia. Good old Russia. And France, Italy. And America? Japan, China, Nicaragua, Guatemala. Oh, why, we've got a link before we start. Don't be silly, Joey. <laughs> Sorry. What's the time? Nearly 12. Is that right? Well, it ought to be. I haven't been in a minute in the past 10 years. It's all happening now. Sort of a miracle, it all happened. Are you glad you left the army or, or not? Absolutely delighted. Will you go back again? I expect so. How do you feel about that? Absolutely delighted. <laughs> I suppose I ought to do something about it too. You want to? Terribly. Why? I don't know. I wish... I wish Edward hadn't been drowned. We could have started off together. Don't be too impulsive and patriotic and dashing, Joey. Think of your mother. Think of me too. You're all we've got left. Brown some potted meat and biscuits and Worcester sauce and... War is fair as fish oil. We are paid for. War is fair as fish oil. War is fair as fish oil. We are paid for. My dears, we're at war with Germany. No. Listen, listen. It. Don't look sad, Mum. It won't last long. Father says it can't possibly. And it's terribly exciting. I feel rather tired. Here, Mum, dear. Have a nice sozzle. We all ought to get drunk, really, and go roaring about the streets. Edward missed this anyhow. At least he died when he was happy. Before the world broke over his head. Jane, darling, we've had wars before without the world breaking. My world isn't very big. Drink to the war, then. I'm not going to. I can't. Rule Britannia. Send us victorious, happy and glorious. Drink, Joey. You're only a baby still, but you're old enough for war. Drink as the Germans are doing tonight. To victory and defeat and stupid, tragic sorrow. But don't ask me to do it, please.
recruiting songs again. You can't get away from them anywhere in London. Oh, they give me rather a thrill. The girls give me a thrill. I'll bet that little dark one sung her share of fellows into the war. <laughs> George, I'm excited. Final leave off to France Saturday. Marvellous. Marvellously marvellous. Oh, good Lord, Angel. Do you mean to say you don't want to get back? Seriously, don't you feel pretty marvellous? I feel pretty thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's easily remedied. A waiter. Uh, some more wine. Oh, well, it was a bit of luck before coming when it did. I was probably fed up in Oxford. Oxford? I was just starting in an accountant's office. <laughs> well, you'll probably finish up under the coffee in Flanders. Drink up. Have another. <laughs> <laughs> girl can dance. Who is she? A kid by the name of Fanny Bridges. Fanny Bridges? Yes, know her? Excuse me, you chaps. Yes, all right. Uh, come on, bring up. waiting for you. Waiting? You don't mean to say you've been here all this time while I... Oh, no, no. I mean, as a matter of fact, I say you are marvellous. Who are you? One of your oldest friends. Oh, what a lie. I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, but you have. Oh, but I haven't. Oh, really, you have. We lived under the same roof for years. Well, I'm sure this is a very good joke, but I'm awfully busy and... Uh, my name's Joey. Oh, how interesting. And I have a dog called Tarza. <laughs> now, do you mind going, because I have to finish dressing. But you don't remember anyone called Joey? When you were a little girl? Little girl? You're not Joey Marriott. Fanny, you live oh. marvellous. <laughs> <laughs>
maid. Take cover in the basement. Well, it's all very well, but where is the basement? Oh, never mind the basement. Let's go up on the roof. Oh, well, that's that. I can't see a thing. Oh, bless the dark. I'm smashing the rooms of this. What on earth am I got hold of? Feels like a tray of squashed bananas. Thanks, that's my makeup box. Here, <laughs> yeah, we're missing all the fun. You catch hold of my hand. Ah, that's better. Yeah, this way now, don't fall over. Oh, dear, I can't see it. <laughs> what? Horrid at times. All the muck and filth. And it's a bit weird when you find yourself the only surviving officer who went out with the battalion. 
Scott. It may be sort of the law of averages to make up to Mother for Edward going down the Titanic. <laughs> or perhaps I'm just lucky. Anyway, what's the good of talking? Got to go back tonight. Just one last twinkle. Oh, my darling, don't give me any more. I should be tight. You don't want me to fall down during my first number, do you? <laughs> I'm having dinner here, wasn't it? Lovely, son, darling. Lovely. Oh, heavens. I'm on in five minutes. Will you really write to me tonight? Of course I will. Promise. Or you'll be smothered with people after the show and you won't have time. I'll write you in the first interval and send Maggie out to post it. <laughs> Dear old Maggie. Darling, in about one minute, we've got to say goodbye. Flowers, Miss? Oh, give them to Maggie and tell her to put them in water. Yes. Don't go yet, Joey. Stay till my first act wait. Can't. I promised to go home. Mother's waiting for me. Do stay, darling. I can't. Really, I can't. I'm sorry. Of course you can't. So I'll give it to you now. What? Just a little something I had made for you. With my love. Oh, how marvelous. Oh, it's nothing. A little reminder of all the fun we've had. You're a darling. Oh, but you've missed the whole point. It opens. Look. I'll keep it forever and ever and ever. Oh, darling, I almost wish I didn't love you quite so terribly. It makes going back just a bit too thick somehow. I shall miss you. Dreadfully. That's my call. It has been fun, hasn't it? Heavenly. And you don't regret it? Any of it? Not a moment. Oh, how wonderful you are. Do you really love me? Deep down inside, I mean. Of course I do. Enough to marry me? Yes. But I wouldn't. Oh, why not? Too difficult. Besides, we shouldn't be happy married. And your mother wouldn't like it. She'd be all right. Let's not talk about it now. Let's wait until you come back. Oh, no. No. No, not now, dear. I... Listen, Joey. I love you, and you love me. And I've got to go now. I'm late. And you've got to go, too. But I'm not going to say goodbye. We've had fun. Grand fun. And I don't want you to forget me. That's why I gave you the locket. Keep it close to you, Joey. Darling, Joey.
time for goodbyes. Mad, really, aren't you? Awfully. I never know what to say. I'm almost hardened. This has happened so often. Dearest Mum, you are wonderful. Never make a fuss. Don't be too sweet to me, Joey. I don't want to behave badly. You? You couldn't behave badly. Oh, how funny. Robert said that to me years and years ago. It was the Boer War then. This is all so different. <coughs> Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, darling. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Try to see your father on the way. Yes, if I can. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes, marvelous, isn't it? Marvelously marvelous. Aren't you glad to be going back? Terribly. I thought it was all going to finish before I was old enough to go out. So did I. One. Sorry, I'm going to see the RTO. RTO? What's that? Railway transport officer. Don't you know anything? Excuse me, sir. Yes, what is it? Returning from leave, first green jacket. Start, Sergeant. See about these officers. Train, yes, sir. May I speak to you a moment? I'm fearfully busy. Won't the staff sergeant do? I'm afraid not, Father. What? How do you know I was here? Just found out at the base. Oh, you young devil. <laughs> How's Mother? Splendid. Just about killing herself, I suppose, with war work and all that. She's pretty wonderful. Mm. You look pretty tired, too, sir. Well, we were moving troops very rapidly. And we on the run. What did you do with your leads? Oh, I don't know. Lots of things. I saw Aunt Margaret. Yeah. Couldn't dodge it, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> How is she? Oh, she's all right. But when do you go on leave, sir? Probably never again. Good Lord, why? Because they're talking about an armistice. No. In fact, we may all be home in a few weeks. The train for first dream jacket, number one platform, five minutes, sir. Five minutes. I've got to collect my kit. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye. Good of you to look me up, Joey. Goodbye. General Staff Home Command speaking. An armistice has been signed and hostilities will cease today at 11 Akema. At 11 o'clock precisely, the Hyde Park Battery will fire a salute of 21 guns and the officer in charge of mortars will let off a salvo of maroons. Written orders will follow. Officers will now proceed to synchronize watches.
Her ladyship will not keep you a moment, madam. Much obliged, I'm sure. said Mrs. Bridges. It never occurred to me that it was you. Yes, I just thought I'd call. It's rather important, as a matter of fact. Oh, do sit down. I'm delighted to see you again. Thank you. How's Fanny? Oh, very well. She's an over-the-moon now, you know. It's about her I've come to see you, really. Oh, well. Well, it's rather difficult. Oh, what's the matter? About her and Master... <coughs> her and Joe. Joe? Yes, Joe. They've been having a... <coughs> well, to put it frankly, if you know what I mean, they've been having an affair. His last two leaves, he spent a lot of time with her. I wouldn't come to see about it at all, only... Uh, well, I think Fanny's very upset about it. Now that the war was over, they'd be coming home. I thought that... What uh, did you think? I thought they ought to get married. Does she want to marry him? No. Not exactly. That is, um... Oh, well, I haven't talked about it to her. She doesn't know I know. How do you know? Found a letter from him. Have you read it? Yes, I've got it here. I brought it with me. I don't wish to see it, thank you. Oh, but I only brought it because I thought... Tell me, is Fanny in any sort of trouble? Oh, no, nothing like that. Well, I think we'd better wait until Joe comes home, then they can decide. Oh, I'm sure I didn't wish to upset you. I'm not in the least upset. But it's been on my mind. It's been worrying me to death. I think you should have spoken to your daughter before you came to see me. I never interfere with my son's affairs. I'm sure I'm ever so sorry. Please don't let's discuss it any further. Goodbye, Helen. Oh, I suppose you imagine that my daughter isn't good enough to marry your son. Well, if that's the case, I can assure you you're very much mistaken. Fanny's received everywhere. She knows all the best people. How nice for her. I wish I did. Things aren't what they used to be, you know. No, it's all changing. Yes, I see it is. But Fanny's at the top of the tree now. She's at in the most wonderful office. Oh, Ellen. I'm so very, very sorry. I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. Inside, you must. Something seems to have gone out of all of us, and I... I'm not sure that I like what's left. Goodbye, Ellen. I don't know why you should talk like that. Some of us have got on in the world, and some of us haven't. I said goodbye, Ellen. Yes, what is it? It's all over, my lady. The maroons are going off. Excuse me. There's no answer. What is it? What's happened? worry about Penny and Joe. He won't be able to come back. He's dead. Oh, your ladyship.
Why are we here in Geneva? To bear witness to the truth that if the world war is to be crowned by peace, the world must disarm. All efforts to avoid this parallel. You talk of disarmament, but where is it? What defense does it offer? But this poison gas gives us security. What all this talk about balancing the budget? The whole world broke. We're all broke. The whole thing is a heartless mockery. You ever tire of Extensions of investigation, it comes to this. God is a superstition too crude to impose upon a child. We abandon the primitive yearning of a savage for an object of worship and focus... We are all free to join in the scramble for power and riches and to sell our beliefs to buy success. But each of us must one day face an awful question that is echoing down through the ages. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? in a new song hit. Waiting for anything. 
I have a perfectly good time. I go to the opera, I go to theatres, I go to the zoo. So far, I must say, I found the zoo infinitely the most entertaining. Really, Jane, dear, you're quite hopeless. Oh, I refuse to be jostled, Margaret. All oh, this jazz and whizzing about. No wonder you're always in the clutches of a new doctor. Now, dear, I don't think it's quite fair to say that. He's the most wonderful man I've ever met. And he has the most marvellous touch. He's completely cured me. Cured you of what, darling? Oh, of my, uh, my ailment. <laughs> well, I'm perfectly comfortable where I am, without taking cures for ailments I haven't got. Yes, but how do you know you haven't got any ailments? Because I'm sane and active and as strong as a horse. There's Robert. It's nearly time, my lady. I'll put it on the coffee table, Franklin. Good heavens. I must fly. I wouldn't interfere with your little ritual for the world. Oh, my dear. You wouldn't interfere. You're an old friend. Mm, that's very sweet of you, Jane, dear. All the same, I must go. Why? I'm late as it is. Oh. Going already, Margaret? Yes, Robert. Why, I promised to be at the embassy at half past eleven. And now, don't forget, you're both dining with me on Tuesday. Oh, my dear, how can we if you're going to Paris on Monday? Oh, but I shall be flying back in the afternoon. Flying? <laughs> she would. <laughs> and now, Robert, don't bother to come down. Nonsense, of course I will. No, 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 I insist. Now, I can easily let myself out. Very well. And a happy new year to you. Bless you both. Good night, dear. The same to you. Twice over. Well, Robert, here we go again. One more year behind us. One more year before us. Do you mind? No. Everything passes, even time. That means you do. And you don't. I still believe in the future. Ah, that's your strength, my dear. I believe in the future, too, but not quite in the same way. It's been quite an adventure, our life together. A great adventure, Robert. Anxious sometimes and sad. Sometimes unbelievably happy. But thank God, never dull or, or sordid. And most of it has come to us in this house. In this very room. Yes. Sometimes I've almost hated it. You wouldn't move. Oh, my dear, of course not. We might have some new curtains, of course. We have, dear. Hmm? Have we? Oh, so we have. <laughs> I never noticed. They've only been up a week. No. <laughs> dear Robert. One minute, it will be 1933. Well, Robert, what toast have you in mind for tonight? Something gay and original, I hope. No, just the future. Our old friend, the future. The future of England. But first of all, my dear, I drink to you. And I drink to you, Robert. Loyal and loving, always. Now, let's couple the future of England with the past of England. The glories and victories and triumphs that are over and the sorrows that are over too. Let us drink to our sons who made part of the pattern and to our hearts that died with them. Let us drink to the spirit of gallantry and courage that made a strange heaven out of unbelievable hell. 
and let us drink to the hope that one day this country of ours, which we love so much, will find dignity and greatness and peace again. <laughs> Greatness and peace. <laughs> 